welcome everybody. We got a big registration list tonight. So we'll give you guys a couple minutes to roll in. Now the fun really begins. Paying the bill, baby. You thought you were having fun before. <laughs> right? Let's get ready to cut some checks. Yeah, and this I hope you guys ate dinner or people on the Pacific Coast, you're uh you had a snack because we got a lot of stuff to go through. You got to be really alert tonight. This is like a jam-packed presentation. But as we always do, we'll send you the recording and the slides so you don't have to worry if you miss something or you want to review it again. Yeah, this, um, I would argue of all the presentations we do, and there's a lot of them, especially for those of you that follow along with us, right? You can attest to that. This is probably the most information that we fit into an hour, right? This is kind of, we're, this is a big challenge, right? Because we want to talk about, okay, before we get to borrowing, how can we minimize the amount we, we, uh, that we might have to borrow? That's a conversation. Then when we think about our resources, if we have any, when should we use what? And then finally, when we do have to borrow, how does that whole world work, right? So it's a lot. It's a lot in one night. Like Peg said, You'll get the recording. You'll get the slide deck tomorrow. You'll have access to us. We're going to, we're going to, um, when we sign off tonight, we're going to talk about how you can meet with us individually, not just Peg and I, but you know, our entire team, uh, as some of you know, because this is a, this is a big decision here. Right. And we want to get this right. I think it's a less sexy part of the process, uh, but it's really important. So, um, and, and, and if, if you guys want to just confirm more for me, put in the chat quick, are we all class 2023 families? I'm sure there's some um, smattering, but but just put the class of um, class of, of your students. And yeah, we're all yeah. 23s across the board. And I don't want to bury the lead here, guys. We're also giving away a thousand dollar scholarship uh, at the end of tonight as well. So everybody that's uploaded a financial aid award letter went into our drawing. And we're going to do that live at the end tonight it's kind of fun we like spin this little wheel and a name will pop up and then i'll say specifically kind of who that is hopefully that this person is on live tonight the last time we did this maybe a month or so ago unfortunately that person wasn't on live but we did track them down and and uh they got the end result they were looking for so hopefully we have a, some more theatrics tonight and be, and and just before i do that again i'll make sure that you understand how you can talk to us one-on-one -on -one, um if you don't feel like you got your can all your questions answered tonight. Um, and I guess on that note, like always, right, or for those of you that are new, please put, I know I just told you to put uh, that in the chat and I appreciate the early participation here, but any questions moving forward, put it in the Q&A as opposed to the chat. Whichever one of us is not talking is going to be banging away in the Q&A, answering all the questions we can. We won't get to them all tonight. I, I bet you we'll get to like a hundred of them, but we got a lot, uh, we, you know, this is an important topic, right? So there's a lot of you and I'm sure you all have questions. Challenge us, right? And you can be anonymous, you know, fire away with everything. We will get to as many as we can. And then we'll let you know how to interface with us after tonight if uh, if we don't get to your particular question. So I, I guess kind of without further ado, I want to get into it. Quick introductions tonight, so sorry if this is the first time you're seeing us. Usually we like to take our time here and help you get to know us a little bit, but it's a, we, we got to get down to business a little bit here. So my name is Matt Carpenter. I'm one of the founders at College Aid Pro. Uh, you class of 2023 folks was the, or, or, or is, we're not quite done yet, we're at the finish line, the 18th class that I've helped guide through this process, right? So, um, uh, and, and I've seen all different scenarios. So so I like to think that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in how to advise at, at this stage of the process. And I know I can say that uh, for my compadre here as well, Peg Keo, the, the fairy godmother of financial aid herself in the flesh here. Uh, I'm, I'm from the Boston area, right? I'm, I'm uh, uh, coming to you from Beverly, Massachusetts on the North Shore tonight. And Peggy's out there in the Washington area. But Peggy, if you want to say hello and get down to it, so we'll do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, again, Peg Keo, I've been doing this for years. This is what gets me out of bed, you know, have a background in financial planning, asset management, and then started doing this about focusing exclusively on this over a decade ago, had my own business, and then I joined CAP a couple of years ago. So, so as Matt said, please put your questions in the chat. We'll remind you if you forget or if you've shown up late and you didn't hear us. Um, that'll help us streamline everything. And uh 
And we have two sets of triplets that I saw. So that's super cool. And Peggy, you know what? I, 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 I was, I was, I got too excited here. Where we should start is by saying specifically to you class 2023, which is just about all of you. Congratulations, right? Your kid's going to college next year. You, you did it. I mean, that's a massive, massive accomplishment. And I'm sure you got some bumps and bruises and, uh, you know, a couple more to come here, but don't, let's not, Let's not bury the lead here. Um, yeah, so no, it's huge. Congratulations. It's huge. And try and enjoy the summer. I have twins. They're done with college. I have see some twins in here too. It goes by fast. You're going to want to kill them some days, but try and enjoy it because they're going to be gone soon. You're going to be waving goodbye at that door. And believe me, I get choked up just even remembering that. So, all right. So let's get started here. We are College Aid Pro. This literally is our mission. And the way that we empower families to shop smarter for college is by educating you and guiding you on the journey. We know the journey you're on. Let us guide you. I know some people have already put comments that they've been on our other webinars. So a lot of you guys know us and, and you understand what we're doing here. So there we are. So everybody got an email today. So we strongly encourage you, and Matt will drop it in the chat, this URL, to hop on, create your free account if you haven't yet. Um, a couple people said, how can I be in the drawing? You had to have uploaded award letters into your MyCap account. So I don't, I'm thinking if they haven't done it by now. It's closed. I told those people, unfortunately, yeah. I think we'll have more opportunities throughout the summer. I think certainly moving forward, we do it periodically. So I'm sorry if, if, if you yeah. have it already, unfortunately, but um, yeah, but go ahead and do that. Go ahead, set up your account. If we have time, we're going to hop in and show you some, some ways you can use this on this last step of the process. Okay. And I got to move my zoom junk out of the way here. So let's just look at the timeline and, and how all this plays out reason why we're doing this now is bills are going to start going out from the college. You're probably not going to get a bill in the mail. That's very old school, but it's going to hit up in your child's portal. And it just depends on the school, if there's semesters or quarters, when you're going to get it, but they could start coming mid-July. Some of them are due mid-August with my two. One was due the first Friday of classes. The other one was due a whole month before. So it really depends on the colleges, Okay. Um, and the, if there's semesters or quarters there, you, you know, it's going to follow that same cadence. So we're talking about what's going to come this summer. Same thing's going to happen for the end of the fall into December. If it's quarters, it'll be a little tweaked. You'll get used to it once you're, once you're in the process. Um, the whole piece that we're going to spend a lot of time on with loans you want to start thinking about that now. We're going to give you tons of great information and then start looking into these loans and applying. You're, you're, you're not early. You know, we, we advise you to have it done by mid-July so you get your answers. You can do some planning around it. And we're happy to meet with you, you know, to talk about that. And then we will also um, talk about payment plans. I think we've got another slide that I'll, I'll hit on that a little, a little better. So, Cash flow is king. So you might think, oh, what's a hundred bucks a month toward college? Well, if you multiply that by 48 months, and I don't know exactly how we got the 5,000, but we're going to be close, whatever it is. That's we rounded it up, Peggy. I know you like yeah, to be We're rounding up, but, we round you know, 4,800, 5,000, okay? But, it, you know, it's a lot. That's a lot of money in my book. A thousand bucks is a lot of money in my book. A hundred bucks is a lot of money, right? So every little bit is, is going to really help here. So it's really time, you know, hit the reset button, sit back and think about the pieces of your financial life. And this is, I love this stuff, right? Because I'm a financial planner at heart, but just think about some stuff. Is there money being wasted? Is there a gym membership that you're not using? I know that we, Matt uses his gym membership to the full extent, but not everybody does, right? You think? You think? <laughs> right? you. Oh, God, I can't believe I invited that. Sorry, audience. I'm very sorry, but... So think about that because you you know like the financial junk drawer that we're saying there might be places where you can kind of cut waste and that's more money to pay for school and that's less money that you have to borrow because you really want to minimize what you're borrowing. So how can we how can we reduce the amount that we're going to borrow? So this is what I I said we had a, a better slide for. All the colleges have payment plans, right? And typically 
almost all the time. It's not like when you do it for your car insurance where they're charging you more to not pay all up front. There's an enrollment fee, but it's a one-off fee. And then every school is a little different, but typically it's a 10 month repay, repayment. It's a payment schedule, right? So you can, you can think about all these different pieces because a lot of people can't come up with all this money at the beginning of a semester. It's a lot of money. So you're not penalized financially. And so that's something to think about when COVID hit, I was telling everybody to do it because you didn't know if school was going to close and they were going to send the kids home, right? So anyways, that's it, an option. Sorry, Peggy, uh, one quick addition here because we got questions about it earlier today and we're getting a bunch here now too. Today's a very popular date for the first uh, payment plan due, six one, right? But it's, and a lot of people get scared when they see that. You can still participate. Every college is different, first of all. And there's some colleges that don't have payment plans and some of them are like three different payments. So it's like, how does that even help us basically? But most schools have this 10 month payment plan. A lot of them start June one and you're, it's okay if you don't start it now, but sometimes, for example, if you start on seven, one a month from now, they want two payments for that first payment. You have to contact your school specifically to say, do you guys offer a payment plan? What is it, et cetera. Even if you Google, you know, um, Cornell University payment plan, it'll usually take you right there and you'll get specifics uh, on that. So yeah, I got a bunch of questions. So I just want to jump in quick. Okay. Right, yeah, sure. Okay. So you probably, you might have some different resources. So just want to, I mean, I could talk about this for 20 minutes and Matt would interrupt me five minutes in. So I will not do that. But there are different, you, you might have an UGMA or an UTMA. That's a custodial cap. If you, if, you don't know what that is. Don't worry about it, right? You don't have it. That's that's an account for a lot of reasons that you might want to tap first, but it's a bigger conversation because you're, it's your child's asset. It gets it hits their tax return if you have gains. So I'm just planting that seed. You will if you don't understand what I'm saying, you should get some professional help before you start liquidating that. And and all these strategies, we're sharing them with you. Hey, this is something to think about. We're in no way saying all these hundreds of people on this webinar should do this because we would be negligent to do that, right? But if you have an UGMA or an UTMA, that you, you might want to think about liquidating that first, depending on your family, but maybe not. But that is a, a ch your child's asset. If you much more common, 529s, education savings accounts, prepaid tuition plans, those are all under the IRS umbrella of a 529. That's another thing. A lot of people will use that at the beginning, get it off their books. They don't have to put it on the forms in subsequent years. That can be a smart strategy, but there's some loans we're going to talk about later that are use it or lose it. So you want to do a four-year plan before you decide how you're using these specific resources. And then other college savings plans, gifts from grandparents, all that sort of stuff. The good thing about gifts from grandparents, you used to have to strategize around it. Now it's not going to be punitive to you if you have outside help for the FAFSA only schools, which is the lion's share of them. Okay. Five two nines. Few quick things about five two nines. If this is your first child and you're going to start using it, you can only take money out of a five two nine for qualified higher education expenses. That's an IRS term. All the things you would think are included in there: tuition and fees, room and board, books computer. What is not included in there is traveling to and from school, that airplane, gas, any of that. That is not considered a qualified higher education expense. So just keep that in mind. Most people can spend their 529 down just paying tuition and fees, room and board, books, and computer, um, anything the college requires. So remember, plane fare is not included. You reach out to who's ever, if it's Vanguard, who's ever administering your 529, you ask for the money. They will give you the whole account if you ask for it. So it's up to you to keep that paper trail and make sure you're not taking out more than what you're paying the school. Otherwise, you could you could be forced to pay a 10% penalty on what earnings as well as a 10% penalty. And you're going to get what's called a 1099Q when you start taking distributions and the university will produce a 1098. No, 1099Q and a 1098T is what the university will give you saying, hey, this is what you paid us. 
So high level, that's what's coming down the pike. There's a tax credit that's a wonderful tax credit if you're eligible. So it says right here, the phase out, if you make more than 180,000, you're phased out. 160, you're, you're, you're not eligible. 160 to 180, you're gonna get less than 2,500. It'll start being prorated. But what this means is if you owe the government 20,000 in federal income tax, you now owe them 17,500. So it comes right off of your tax liability. The main thing you need to understand about this is you have to spend $4,000 on tuition and fees and books, not room and board, that's not out of a 529 or any tax advantaged account. You can't double dip and get two tax breaks. So if you're gonna fund your this whole education through a 529, that's great. But if you're eligible for this credit, make sure you spend 4,000 in each tax year, not school year. The IRS doesn't care about school year. It's all about tax year so that you can get this credit. If you're not eligible, because you make 200 grand, um, there are other strategies that I could go on for 20 minutes about where you're, you're making your child claim themselves, but there's a lot of nuances to it. So I'm just planting that seed. If you're a business owner, you could hire your child, but these are things that will hurt your financial aid eligibility. So you're gonna wanna get some professional guidance and, and we're happy to help you. If you make a lot of money and you're a business owner, there could be some strategies. Um, Peggy, Peggy can I um, stop you on two things? Because we're getting some um, multiple questions on a couple fronts here. <laughs> One of them is, um, can we use 529s to pay for any loans? Okay, that's one of the questions. The other one is just just to repeat again what you said about paying uh, the all of the bill out of the 529 and 4,000 having to come from somewhere else. Just like a, a repeat on that because it is a little sure, bit confusing. Sure, for yeah. So just the, the rule is in order to claim this credit, you have to pay for tuition and fees and or books in a given tax year, you have to spend 4,000 on that. That makes you eligible and your income to take that 2,500. If you take it all out of a 529 where you've had tax-free earnings and you don't pay tax when you pull it out on the earnings, you, then you can't take a tax credit on money that is already getting a tax credit. The IRS calls that double dipping. So the main takeaway is if you have a child going to school this fall, which most of you do, spend $4,000 and you make $140,000, spend $4,000 out of pocket by December 31st to pay for tuition and fees, which will be easy because no school, unless it's community college, you're paying way more than that, and books. And then you will be eligible. Most people find this out from their CPA when it's too late, and then they miss out on a year of taking it. So that's hopefully, that's super clear. The other thing is you can take $10,000 out of a 529 once to pay for student loans. That's a new rule from the last few years, but it's a one-time it's a one-time thing, just once. Right. This isn't the, you know, we can't do 2000, this, uh, you know, whatever, 10,000 this year, 10,000 next year, 10,000, oh. one shot deal. Yeah. It's a one shot deal. And we're going to talk about the loans in a little bit. Okay. So that's AOTC. All right. I'll turn it over to you, Matt. Thank you. That was good. I, let's see if I can match your kind of brevity here. I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, that would be a first. Um, yeah, okay, so, I'll so, cut you off. Don't worry. I know you will, though. Um, but you owe me a couple. Um, so a couple of things here, just to, just really quick bullet points. I mean, there is our job would be really easy, and this would be a short presentation if there was a best loan for people to take. Right? It, it is incredibly common, and we'll have a ton of meetings over the coming weeks and months here. And I might have four meetings in a day, and for the first one, I'll recommend they take the federal plus loan. For the next family, it makes sense to to use one of the private student lenders like SoFi or College Ave. And then I'm going to recommend the state plan for the next family. So something to keep in mind. And ultimately, your family's criteria is going to dictate the best solution for your family. Now, I can say with a fair amount of confidence, every single one of you right now is going, I have no idea what my family's criteria is. We're going to help you get there tonight. So, so sit tight there. Um, and then the last one is, trying to give you some guidelines around, well, how much is too much for my kid to borrow? Um, and that's probably a good segue to this next slide here, Peggy. Sure. Um, and, and this is not, listen, 
I fully understand that some families have to borrow the maximum amount and there's no resources to put towards it. And the school that you're going to is a school that and we are where we are right now, right? So we might not have the luxury of, of too many decisions to make right now. Um, but we get the question all the time, how much is too much for my kid to borrow? What's a reasonable amount to borrow? And the best metric, and this is built into all your platforms, right? When we told you earlier, if you haven't set up your MyCap account, you want to go ahead and do that um, because the best metric to determine, well, how much is too much to borrow is what is the average expected starting salary for the student based on the school and based on their major, right? And that is kind of the threshold, right? So if you want to go be an engineering major at Cornell, right, we have in this, again, this is built into your account. So you'll see what the average starting salary is there. And that's where you want to, um, and 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 sorry, Peggy. A bunch of people are asking for the link again. If you want to put it, in I'm, there. I'm actually typing it right now. <laughs> you know, let, let me show my screen super quick, Peggy, because um, it's helpful even for those of you that have your accounts, just to have a reference point here, right? For any school that you're considering, when you go into this affordability page, right? One thing that we tell you is, okay, well, you know, you can say, well, this is what the school is going to cost you versus your budget. Here's the total loan. You get an idea of what these loan payments are going to be after graduation, but you can compare that next to your average take-home pay at that school with that major, right? And again, if you want to drill down a little bit further, we have some more metrics again in terms of specifically what we expect uh, is a fair, you know, again, Majors are going to change, you know, and, and this is a far from perfect, but it gives you some guidelines to say, okay, this is my goal that I don't want to borrow more than. So, um, sorry, Peggy, go ahead and go back there. But, but again, we get that question all the time. So we like to get out ahead of it. Um, okay. I can look forward right now. Yeah. And I'll rip through this, right? Here's all the, here's basically all of the loans, right? There's two types of federal loans, one for students, one for parents. Again, we're going to unpack each of these. There's the private student loan sector. There are state programs. And finally, what we call internally uh, alternative loan options. And those are the biggies, right? My home equity, my 401k, can I borrow from family members? Uh, or potentially borrow or withdraw from a, a life insurance policy if I have if I have that option. Um, so here's the starting point, guys. And this is the you know I said a couple of minutes ago we recommend different things to everybody. This is probably the one universal recommendation that we make, and and that is especially for families that are going to need to borrow. This is where you start right? So long as you complete the FAFSA, and if you haven't yet, by the way, it's not too late, even for you class 2023, you could still complete the FAFSA and be eligible for this program, your student specifically. Uh, and you are entitled, the student is entitled to borrow up to $5,500 their freshman year, goes up a little bit to 65, sophomore year caps out at 7,500 junior and senior year. Right. And you guys probably recognize those financial aid award letters. Sometimes you may have seen a, a percentage of the loan was subsidized versus unsubsidized. Subsidized just means zero interest accrues while the student is in college. And then we get this six month grace period afterwards and, and, um, before that first repayment uh, is due six months after graduate from college. The unsubsidized portion just means the meter's ticking on the interest uh, right away, right? As soon as the money's dispersed during college. Now, me personally, I will recommend to every family that I meet with, take advantage of this loan program, even if they don't need it. Again, number one, if we need to borrow, this is the best place to start. Even if you're fortunate enough where you don't need to borrow, we want you to take advantage of this for a few reasons. Number one, you can take it out. It's just under your kid's name. They don't need a co-signer. They don't need established credit. They're guaranteed they're going to get this loan so long as they go follow the proper steps. And you could pay it off instantaneously, right? Before any interest accrues. We do that each year. And now your kid graduates with established credit. So it's a, it's an amazing perk if you have uh, the luxury of not needing this program, right? And again, if you need to borrow, this is where you're going to start, uh, you know, really full stop. Another reason where it makes sense is that. 
the optics, quite frankly, right? Where, and we have a lot of examples to support this. If things change years down the road from now, somebody loses a job one or two years from now, you have another uh, student entering college one or two years from now, and you go to appeal to say, hey, we need more money. Our situation changed big time. The college knows whether or not that you take advantage of this program. Did you take advantage of that financial aid, this loan that we gave you in years past? And, and if the answer is no, you odds are you're dead in the water with that appeal. It really counts against you and it's really factored in. So if nothing else, it's also kind of a hedge towards any unforeseen things that could happen in the future. So long story short, from where I sit, you'd have to talk me out of why it's not a good idea to take advantage of this. Go ahead, beg it. And, and um, a couple other steps here. Again, I kind of talked through these, right? Establishing that credit history for the kids, right? We don't need to make a payment until six months after we graduate. And you go, you can go to the next slide uh, quickly, Peg. And then after we complete the FAFSA, the only other steps that we need to actually execute it uh, is, is through the student's FSA ID. You go to this link here. And again, we're going to send that in the follow-up um, tomorrow. There's two steps that the kids need to complete online. They're called the, the, the loan counseling and the loan agreement. Essentially, they're giving an electronic signature. And then the, the Department of Education wants them to go th through some education and basically say, hey, do you understand you're borrowing money? Do you understand how interest works? Do you promise to pay us back someday? Um, and give them some education in, in kind of in lieu of a cosigner or established credit. So um, again, fairly straightforward, but that's that's kind of the deal there. And actually for that money to change hands between the federal government and the colleges. Okay. Now this is the parent program. So, so this is the federal program for parents that are borrowing for college. And one of the biggest um, most notable things that you have to understand completely if you are a parent that's going to utilize this program, it is just your name on this loan for the entire life of the loan. Okay. So if you consider this your responsibility, well, then that doesn't really matter. But if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to borrow on my kid's behalf because I have to right now, because anything above that federal government student loan that again is capped out at 5,500 bucks for this year, anything that the kid borrows above that, somebody's going to have to be on the hook. Somebody with established credit is at least going to have to co-sign. Okay. So, uh, but with this parent program, the federal parent program, it's just the parents that are on that loan. Okay. Um, and you can go to the next loan here, Peggy. Yeah. And I'll just say, based on a question I just saw with this, you don't, they can give you the full amount minus any from their cost of attendance, minus any aid they give you. You don't have to take it all. So somebody was saying, you know, what if I get more than I need? If you realize the money, you can just pay off the loan with it. The college isn't going to send anything back. They're going to send you what you request and what you qualify for, basically. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Um, okay. So again, that's, I, I've more or less hit these. I mean, in terms of, you can go to the next one here, Peggy. I mean, the, the, um, Okay, so so what are some of the negatives here? And again, some of these are, are could be a little bit of a, a, a gray area here, right? For some families, they don't care that the parents are on it for the life of the loan. For some do. If you do, that's a negative here. This is a really high origination fee, right? Instantaneously, the federal government is taking 4% off the top, right? As soon as this loan comes out. So it is a high origination fee and it's a pretty high interest rate, right? This year, the rate just came out as you would probably expect based on rates in general not competitive, right? Just over 8% this year. Thanks. It's been several, a lot of years since we've been this high on the federal program, but I don't think we can count that as a win. I mean, believe it or not, for some of you, I might've just taken your breath away when you saw 8%, but in this educational market, when there's no real collateral here, it's not like the bank can, you know, like when the bank can take your home away or whatever, um, you, you know, it's not outrageous. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the middle of the pack in terms of uh, rates here. Um, but go ahead, Peggy. So, I mean, I probably a lot of you are looking at going, well, like, why would anybody consider a plus loan given what I just heard? 
But for some, a lot of families, a meaningful percentage of families, at least, it makes sense. And some of the reasons are is that it's by far, you're working with the federal government, by far, it's the most flexible. Essentially, you can change repayment plans an unlimited number of times at any time, okay? Um, and we can defer this payment until six months after graduation without paying a higher interest rate. Now, interest will be accruing in the meantime, okay? So I can say I don't want to make a payment for four and a half years knowing that the meter is running on the interest. However, there's no prepayment penalties. So that gives me flexibility. So, so for some families that are, you know, maybe you're in sales, maybe you're self-employed and income fluctuates a lot. And it would be great to have a four and a half year uh, kind of cushion for, for, in terms of a firm obligation, but knowing and, and hopefully being intentional about chipping away at it in the meantime, okay? We can consolidate uh, these loans multiple years and between multiple children. That's not something you can do with any other lenders in terms of going between multiple children. And there are some forgiveness programs. If we're anywhere in the civil service, we still have some robust uh, forgiveness programs. So if, if the parent is a nurse, is a police officer, uh, is a teacher, right, or just works at any um, institution, right, even if you are an admin at a college or university, you could be eligible for some forgiveness programs. And there's still, not all of it is forgiven. If you make payments for 10 years and you're still employed in that civil service job, at that point, um, whatever is left on the loan would be uh, forgiven. So lots to unpack there, but I just want to tease that that program exists where it doesn't with other lenders. And again, for some families, this may be your only choice because by far the federal government is the most lenient with credit requirements, right? If you don't have very good credit uh, or you have bad credit, you don't have a high income, this may be your only choice, right? So for a lot of families that fit somewhere in that bucket, the, the PLUS loan is going to be the solution, right? They might make that decision for us because we might not be eligible for the private student sector, the, this, uh, you know, state loans, et cetera. Go ahead, Peggy. Okay, so state loans, right? The, the biggest difference, I would say, the, and there's a couple of them between the in, in um, the federal plus loan, okay, uh, for parents and the state program is that now both parties, the student and the parent or parents are formally attached to that loan, okay? Um, and so if you're a family that says, listen, I, I see this as uh, uh, my kid's responsibility, or at least a percentage of it is my kid's responsibility. I want them to be formally attached to this. Um, you know, this is, this is something that um, uh, would be a better fit than the plus loan, for example, if that's a requirement for your family. Not all states have borrowing programs, right? It's, uh, you call it 20, a lot do up here in the Northeast, right? I, where we live in Massachusetts does. Uh, our program is MIFA, uh, Vermont's VSAC, New Jersey's HESA, uh, Rhode Island's RISLA. What makes Rhode Island and Massachusetts, now Massachusetts is new to the party here, very unique is that you can borrow from these programs regardless of where you live and regardless of where your kids go to school. So I, I saw someone write in, hey, what about if I, I live or go to school in D.C.? D.C. doesn't have a particular program, okay? But for you, right, let's and, and neither does New York, for example, right? If you live in New York and your kid's going to Georgetown University in D.C., you could still borrow through RISLA, Rhode Island's program, or through MEPA, Massachusetts program, right? where all the other state programs, you either have to be a resident. So again, if we're picking on Pennsylvania, for example, you either have to live in Pennsylvania or you could live in California, but if your kid comes to Penn State, right now you could also, even though you're a California resident, borrow through Pennsylvania's program. So it's something we always like to flag because most people don't know there's such a thing as state programs. And as a matter of fact, this year specifically, um, they're going to be good options for a lot of people, maybe the best, and they're going to be the the, the option for, for a meaningful amount of people. Um, you can go ahead, Peggy. Okay, so the cons, right? We don't have that same, it's not the federal government, so we don't have that same flexibility, that same consumer protection. protection. We can't change plans whenever we want and our, our posit. There's not going to be any forgiveness programs. Um, we don't have the ability to consolidate between multiple kids. Um, right. And the other 
the other thing here that's not on here, but I think it's relevant, but basically, and this, this is true really for all loans, for something that we get, we're going to have to give something up. Okay. So for example, for most of the state programs, and of course, every state's a little bit different, right? You get, um, but for most of the state programs, you can defer making payments until after graduation. So you could set it up just like the plus loan. I don't have to make a payment for four and a half years. However, in order to get that flexibility, you are going to pay a higher interest rate, right? So that's just kind of something to be aware of. So it's like, if you want more flexibility, higher interest rate. You want a lower interest rate, cool, less flexibility. So that's kind of a good general rule of thumb. And they're a little bit more, they're a little bit tougher in terms of credit score requirements and how robust that application is. Um, go ahead, Peggy. Thank you. Um, and so pros here, right? We can get some competitive rates here, at least competitive within this educational loan uh, world. Again, for some families, it's really important that the student be formally attached to this. If it is for your family, great, you have that. And not only that, but a lot of these state programs, like the private student loans that we'll talk about in a minute, there are co-signer release programs, right? So what that means is if you're a family that says, listen, I see this as my kid's responsibility, all co-sign is uh, 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 on a loan, but I want to be, I want my, my hands off of this as soon as possible. A lot of these state programs and a lot of the private lenders uh, have the, an opportunity where once you get into repayment, if the student, if, if, if you make X amount of payments on time and the student starts to establish credit, we can take the parents off of there in what's called a co-signer release program, right? So a lot different than the PLUS loan where, where that doesn't exist. Um, so I think that's, those are the big takeaways there, Peggy. Thanks. Okay. So private student loan sector, this is what we think of as like, kind of, I think traditionally as like the, the you know, I think I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Sally May, maybe you Sally May little, uh, not necessarily known. It used to be a federal government, uh, program. It used to be part of the federal government. It is not, it is a private company. Okay. But, the, but these are again, your traditional student loans, where the student is the primary borrower and the parent is on there just as a co-signer, basically letting them use their credit score. So the um, you know, lender feels good enough that, that they are, um, this is gonna get paid back someday. Now, the rate for this, what type of rate you get is entirely dictated based on the co-signer's credit, right? And there's a huge variation. So if you have excellent credit, and, and your family needs to borrow, private student loan sector is probably where I'm going to send you, right? And you're, yeah, um, if you don't, you're, this is going to be the highest uh, rates. And you can probably go to the next one here, Peggy. Please. So, it, it, you know, and again, in terms of the cons, right, these guys generally get the bad name. You, you've heard some horror stories about Sally Mays and, and lenders of the like, right? Uh, they've earned that. Um, and a lot of times something that you want to be careful of is when you apply for these loans and you see what type of introductory rate you get, that's usually variable. And the fact that it's variable is usually buried in the fine print. So you just want to be conscientious of that, right? Because of course, variable, you, we don't know exactly what we're signing up for. Usually the caps are incredibly high. And the private student loan sector is a, is a pain in the sense that we actually have to complete an application before we see what rate we qualify for. Whereas the federal government, we know it's 8.05%, full stop. Any of the state programs, they're gonna be front and center right in our face. If you qualify for this loan, here's the rates, here's the repayment terms, right? You don't need an application to find out. Everybody signs up for the same terms. This is totally different. The rates can go as low as four-ish percent to 15% plus. And it's all tied to the to the strength of the application of the cosigner. So again, generally speaking, if you know you don't have great credit, you're probably crossing the private student loan option off your list. If you know that you do have good credit, that's probably what I'm going to recommend for your family if you need to borrow, right? That's likely going to be uh, my recommendation for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the chat right now this is just allows you to compare private student loans side by side. The same thing is also, <laughs> we got a small little link that I just put in there, uh, Peg. Um, but it, it, you'll also see, let me just share real quick, Peggy, if I could. Yep. Um, 
Okay. So in your MyCap account, right in your cap account, you'll see down in the bottom here is, okay, the how to borrow section. And when you go to compare uh, private student loans, right, it'll ask you to type in your college because not every college works with every lender. So you type in your college and then it'll tell you, here's which lenders work with your college and you can compare side by side. And if you want, apply right through there. So again, it's not a this uh, just like any of these sectors of loans, for lack of a better word here, right? You got to try to self-identify where I belong. If you if you know you're going to have a pretty robust application, that's probably where you're going to get the lowest rate. If you know you don't, you probably take it off the list. Um, I don't know if I have any more slides here, Peggy. Maybe I got one or two more. All right, let me go back here. Uh, ne uh, yeah, next one here, I think. Yeah, and again, too, where it makes sense for you is like, if number one, if you're thinking like, I just see this as my kid's responsibility, we'll, we look really close at the pro private student loan sector and I'm going to have a robust um, application in all likelihood. Those are two reasons, and especially if they're combined, that this is likely where we're going to end up, somewhere here. Okay. Um, Okay, and then quickly, this is something that 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 we discovered relatively recently is 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 this loan that you're looking at here, where uh, and a couple of unique features that we'll look at in the next page. But you can see kind of front and center two percent while the kid's in college, which is incredibly good in this world, and then six months after the student graduates, which which is still based on what you've seen so far, right, is still very good, right, especially when we look at the life of this. The thing that makes it most unique um, is that you can only borrow up to, I, I shouldn't say only, it's it's capped at $12,000. You can only borrow $12,000 here where every other lender we've talked about, you can borrow every dollar that you need for college uh, if necessary, right? And then the, just one more slide here, Peggy, because there's a couple other, obviously I'm not going to go through every bullet point. You guys will get all these, but two things that I'll flag. Number one, a unique part about this loan is if your kid is going to a summer program, you can use it for that. That's a little bit uncommon. And the other one here, if you look at this third bullet point, that the checks are mailed directly to you, not to the college. Again, that's very, very unique. So if you're in dire need of a boat for the summer, like this is, I'm, I'm not stop, saying- Stop, stop, <laughs> I'm not saying definitely do it, but you saw the rates. So, but anyways, uh, th those are two noteworthy things there, but go ahead, Peggy, it's your show. Okay. So now we've given you very quickly all the loan options. There are other options. And somebody even wrote, I saw a question about this and, and I passed it because I knew I was going to hit it. So if you have a lot of home equity, which is your market value minus your liabilities, there are different options. There's something called a home equity line of credit, short, shortened to HELOC. That's where you can get a line of credit, full money as you need it. Say you need $10,000, you pull it. The rest of it just sits there. You're not paying any interest on it. Once you take it, obviously, then you're paying interest. Interest is almost all the time variable, right? So we're in this rising interest rate climate. There's a home equity loan. That's actually taking a loan and realizing the money. That tends to be a higher interest rate. And then a cash out refi, we call it for short. This used to be brilliant a few years ago because interest rate, you know, people had I met a lot of people that had a high interest rate or higher on their mortgage. And I said, all right, you need to refi this puppy aside from college, get a lower interest rate, and then you can pull some of that money out to pay for school. And now your loan payment, I mean, your payment to the bank for your mortgage principal and interest is, is the same or less. It's different now. If you have a really good interest rate, you, you know, I'm not recommending any of these to all of you. I'm just telling you these are the three options. If you have a great interest rate, like I personally do, don't touch that puppy because you are you you are loving it now that the rates are double, triple what what my mortgage is. So, but these are the three options. Um, some people will talk about taking a 401k loan. That makes my skin crawl because this is for retirement, right? So you literally are robbing your retirement. And your program, your plan has to allow it, right, at your employer, and not all plans do. Typically, it needs to be repaid within five years. If you leave the job, you got to pay it back immediately. 
the interest rate, all that stuff is set by the plan. But you want to be really careful if if this is what you're resorting to and, and set all these loans. You got to, we're educating you. We're not advocating for taking $40,000 loans every year, right? That possibly is an unaffordable school, right? Um, Intra-family loans. These are actually great because it doesn't hurt you in financial aid. And, you know, I have some parents that do it to their, their kids, lower interest rates of grandparents, um, actually do up a promissory note. The one downside of this is, you know, you're borrowing money between family or friends and that can create stress. Um, so you just want to be careful that you don't hurt any relationships with it. But this isn't a bad option if you want kids to have skin in the game, but you don't want them to have you don't want to take out a big loan or, you know, for them to have skin in the game and co-signing loans. This could be, this could be an option. Life insurance. This is a, this is a much bigger conversation. Um, there are life insurance salesmen out there that if you have a bunch of money sitting in what I call non-qualified non-retirement money, they'll tell you to put it in a life insurance policy because it's hidden. It's off the table. Be really careful with this. If you have a financial advisor that you know and trust, talk to them. There are some policies for this where you can borrow against them, but you really want to understand what you're doing because there's there's commissions that people get for selling them. There's fees to you. There can be tax ramifications. So don't just do this because somebody um, recommends it that you don't know or trust. But um, and, 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 and what I'd add there is that some people can borrow against your life insurance policy. That's usually fine. There's usually little negative ramifications. Your death benefit usually goes down proportionally. So that can be a viable option here. Um, but again, in terms of taking the cash out distribution, there's way more to think about um, where you just want to make sure yeah. that all your ducks are in a row because like Peg alluded to, there's some bad actors out there that are saying everybody should do this and that's not, everybody should not do this. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Uh, in, in huge, let me just say something else here because we've got a lot of questions around this and it's like, this is sometimes, number one, as you can see here, you know, like my abs are hurting from talking so fast and saying so many words and, uh, <laughs> you know, typing in between here, but is sometimes we take for granted the fact that everybody's doing this for the first time. And again, I know everybody's drinking out of a fire hose right now, trying to keep up. I'm just, I'm promising you, we're not going anywhere. You're getting this stuff tomorrow. We'll talk about how you can meet with anybody on our team one-on-one -on -one to, to help you make a final decision here. Um, but what I wanted to say is each year is its own animal, right? And, and maybe you said this peg I, and shut me up if you did, but I know I didn't, but we're only borrowing for one year and the rates and repayment terms reset every single year. So we couldn't borrow for multiple years, even if we wanted to, right? So we are trying to make the best decision for this year. And then we're going to be here again a year from now, reassessing all of our options, the pros and cons for, for each. Now, for most people, you're going to choose the loan that makes the most sense for you kind of conceptually with multiple variables in play here that I'm going to unpack really on the slide after this. Um, so most people will stay the same route because they, they, that's what makes the most sense for their family. But for example, if you're just, if your driving criteria is where am I going to get the lowest interest rate, that could absolutely change one year to the next. It could be the state plan this year. It could be Sally Mae next year. It could be the very unlikely to be the plus loan any year, but you get what I'm saying here. It could be home equity again, right? I mean, it was very common that we were consistently um, working with families and their best option was home equity, you know, over the last few years, right? And, and I think for this year, it's going to be, I wouldn't be surprised if we recommend it to zero families uh, for the first time in maybe a decade. But um, anyways, I, I, I think that's an important point and it's a good question. So thank you for flagging that. Now, it, we just kind of put this up there to be like, this doesn't matter, right? And my big get here, my big get for all of this, and this is kind of, I can speak for everybody on our team here. There's no fun way to borrow money. Nobody likes to borrow money and pay interest and all this. What we are offering everybody in our ecosystem here is you have the, um, I think your big get is to be like, listen, I understand all my options, okay? I understand the pros and cons of each option. 
And I understand and I feel good about the one that makes the most sense for my family. So I think there's really something to be said for that, to be like, I can go to sleep at night knowing that I I did my homework and I'm making the decision that makes the most sense for my family. Because you are in the minority, I promise you. Most people, when it comes to borrowing for college, are blindly throwing darts. Some get lucky. Most people don't, right? So you can take some solace in that, I think. Um even though this isn't the funnest part of the process, right? That said, it's only one variable, but interest rates do matter. And if we, and on average, right, for what the average family has to borrow, the difference between borrowing at 5% versus 6% or any kind of 1% swing in this whole thing at the end of this loan after compounded interest and accruing interest is about $30,000. So it matters, right? The interest does matter. So I don't want to minimize that. But at the same time, like we're going to talk about in just a second, it's one variable. And there's other ones that are really important too. And you can go to the, um, you can go to the next slide here, Peggy. And we got actually, we, let me hit this question as well, because I've seen it a lot. And Peg, you can weigh in here if you feel differently, because I know we don't see completely eye to eye on this. At least I don't think we do. But I, and you might've seen this question a bunch too. Like, should we use the 529 all up front? Or yeah, should... I wanted to address that live just because there were so many questions. Yeah, go right. ahead. Or should we spread it over the four years? Okay, like, and again, I'll just use the example of, hey, I have $50,000 in my 529 and college is going to be $30,000 a year, right? So I know I'm not going to, I don't have it covered for all four years. Do I spread that out evenly? Do I exhaust it up front? Generally speaking, again, we, we can't give specific financial advice to a crowd of people, right? But generally speaking, my recommendation is I want you to use that up front, not all of it, remember, if you, especially if you're uh, eligible for that American Opportunity Tax Credit, right? $4,000 is going to come from somewhere else freshman year. But I want to, for the most part, exhaust that up front because I want to delay borrowing if I can. Because as soon as I start borrowing, the meter is running on the interest. So if I can delay borrowing from a semester, I do it. If I can do, delay borrowing for a year, better, right? Year and a half, et cetera. So generally speaking, my recommendation is I want to use any resources that I have up front and delay borrowing to the extent that I can control. Um, but Peggy, obviously you weigh in with your thoughts. There. Yeah, so what I would say, I don't disagree with that, but I would say you have to look at this in, in your four-year cash flow view, because if you're going to run out of money halfway through junior year and then say, oh, now I got to start borrowing. I used up all my 529s. Well, you can't go back and get those good direct federal student loans freshman and sophomore year, the 5,500 and 6,500. So you just lost out on 12,000 of the- Sorry, Peggy, let, let me just interject there. That's, I'm, I'm, my recommendation would be to still start that 100%, oh, okay. still okay. take the federal okay. direct student loans, 100%. So okay. I would, yeah, I'm, as long as you- I'm saying you after 50, that. Yeah, if you take your 5,500, then it probably makes sense. We, Matt and I can't tell you, advise you personally without looking at your situation, but it most likely makes sense is what I would say to use up your 529 because that's why you saved it, right? So yes, but you definitely, if you don't have enough to pay for four years, uh, take advantage, figure out your loans and take advantage of loans that you're not, you know, the, the direct federal loans. Yeah. So we're in agreement. Yeah. And again, everybody's getting the, the recording and the slide deck, right? Because we got a few people being like, this is a lot of information, which yeah, to our credit, Peggy, we promised that, right? We promised yes, it. We we uh, we're just following through on our promise here. Um, So ultimately, right, I, I'm sure I, I hope a lot of you take advantage of meeting with us one-on-one -on -one or somebody on our team one-on-one -on -one here, but the conversation is going to go something like this. And if you don't meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, this is the conversations that I want you having at home and in your own minds, because it's going to dictate our recommendations, right? So, and, and it's ultimately, these aren't the only questions, but these are the biggies, right? That helps you. I, I remember I flagged at the beginning, um, you know, th th that the, it, my recommendation is going to be dictated by your criteria and I'm going to help you get there. We're going to get there together, right? So how much does the rate matter? If somebody walks into my office and they're like, I just want the lowest interest rate, my job's easy. Okay. How's your credit? You know, it's a, it, your credit's excellent. Great. We're going to go take out the, somewhere in the private student loan sector or home equity, private student, probably private student loan sector this year. 
your credit stinks. Okay, great. Well, then we're, we have no choice but the plus loan, right? Um, who should be on the loan, right? This is a really, really important one. And most people, when I ask this question, well, whose responsibility is this? Is the kid borrowing? Are you borrowing? Is it both? And most people just kind of look at each other and be like, well, I've kind of had one idea in my mind. Maybe my partner, if I have one, has one idea in their mind. Um, you know, now is the time like, okay, it, it's real now. We have to start thinking concretely. How much is the kid's responsibility? How much is our responsibility? And do we care if the kid is on that loan or not, right? Because for the families that, that come into my office and say, hey, um, th I see this as my kid's responsibility, and, and I want them formally attached to this loan. Well, the plus loan's out the window. Let's now we're down one less option to choose between home equity gone. So really we're between the state option and the private student loan sector, right? How much do I value this consumer protection and flexibility, right? And then three and four really go together in almost like insurance is another way that I look at that. Like, Hey, I just started a new business or I'm self-employed and every year it's like, you know, finger in the air, this thing could go anywhere, right? Or I'm in sales and it fluctuates big time. Um, you know, I want some, I, I, I want some peace of mind, right? So much of my recommendations too will be like, hey guys, like what, what you know, I, I always talk about it like the sleep at night factor right? Like, would it chill you out a little bit to know that you're working with the federal government and, you know, you could change repayment plans at any time. You don't have to make a payment for four and a half years. Like, how does that resonate with you? Like on an emotional level, you can't discount the the origination fee and the high interest rate, but you, you want to start to think about those things and be like, damn, I could get the state loan at 6%, but that's only if I start making immediate repayments on principal and interest starting next month, right? So uh, again, that's why hopefully as I'm talking through these things, you're like, yeah, the, you know, it makes sense that we would have diff different recommendations for different people and it's not all tied to, you know, this one or two criteria, right? And then of course, bullet five was super relevant uh, years ago. It's less so now. I don't think we're going to be recommending home equity right now, especially where probably a, a ton of you are in a, an awesome rate and we don't want to mess with that, right? We'll take it on the chin maybe for a year through some of these edu trad more traditional educational loans, right? But but you have to ask that question, right? Be, and, and again, because for some people it's like, I'm philosophically against using my home to pay for my kid's college. And I'd be like, okay, so you want to borrow at 8% instead of 3% because you're philosophically against it? Let's Let's talk about that, right? Um, but again, I think that's re less relevant for this year. Um, and I think you can go to the next slide, Peggy. And again, everybody. Yeah, holds just, I just want to chime in because um, there's just so many questions about, should I do this? Should I do this? We we really can't tell you specifically for your family, right? The, 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 the big perks of the, you know, if you have all the money to pay for school, people are saying, well, why should I take out that loan? Your child starts developing a credit history. There's other ways to do that. Yes, there is a small loan origination fee, a little over 1% that you're going to lose. Some parents want their kids to have skin in the game. They pay the interest. So there's no right, Matt said this, there's no right answer for that we can just share right here, right? So um, I'm trying to answer people's questions, but always saying, you know, it depends. It depends on your situation. So right. And that's not a work. We're not being politicians up here. That's that's as genuine as you get. I can't tell you, should you take a plus loan or salary May, right? I really can't, but I need a lot more information, um, which kind of brings me to this next page here. And again, nobody go anywhere because we're doing the scholarship giveaway in just a few minutes here. But here's your next steps, guys, right? You know that we have the free support, the free resources. Um, and, and let me put this link in the uh, chat here. Um, but my recommendation, especially for you, 2000 and, and, and 20, and maybe you can grab this link, Peggy, if you have it. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, get it. For you, 2023 families, if you're on my cap already, book an hour with one of us. Okay, you can choose next available. You can choose Peg or I. It doesn't matter. Anybody you meet with is going to be a, the expert of all experts. Okay. Let us have this conversation together, okay? Book an hour with us. If you do it tonight, you have to do it tonight. For those of you that have been on live with us, you know we treat our live audience differently. 
Okay, you get 20% off. So you get, you know, use this coupon code loan 20. Okay, and how you do it is you, within your MyCap accounts, right? If you have them, you go up here and you hit, hit talk to an expert or upgrade. If you have a free account, you'll hit upgrade and then choose the Val Victorian option and use that coupon code. If you're already on the paid platform, you just hit talk to an expert. And again, if you haven't created an account yet, just go to MyCap, create your account. You choose that Val Victorian option. And then let me make sure I go to the, uh, uh, and then again, you, you, you either choose Val Victorian or book the hour with us. Use coupon code loan, uh, loan 20, right? You get the, what is it? 20% off. So $239 guys. Don't overthink this. In my opinion, there's too much at stake. Another thing I want to flag, we forgot to say it at the beginning, Peg, is this was on me. This is what I was supposed to say. Oftentimes we meet with families this time of year for the first time we've met with you uh, at any stage of this process. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to see your the financial aid award that you got from the school. And I want to see if we can't do better. Because oftentimes, again, even after May 1st, you're, obviously your deposits are in, we can still have a successful appeal. So this conversation will start by us checking, did you get a good deal at whatever school you're attending? Number one, can we, we might be able to go back and help you borrow less than the amount you're thinking about now. So that's where we'll start, right? And that's immediate ROI for you guys if there's opportunity there. But again, this is a big decision. We want you to do it the right way. Book an hour. Again, don't over. You can use this at any point over the next year, right? So you could book this tonight and have us review your financial aid forms next year if you wanted to. Obviously, the talking point is, is nailing this part. But um, so that's my firm recommendation, right? If, 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 if you're an underclassman or you want more comprehensive services, you'll you'll see these in the link here and you can you can kind of drill down on your own. But for tonight, take advantage of this. It won't be there tomorrow. It expires. It we're um, you know at, at um, midnight on on our coast here. I know there's a lot of West Coast folks there, but you got till nine o'clock your time. But don't overthink this one, guys. Again, there's a lot at stake. You see uh, what a swing it is. Like in my opinion, and of course I'm biased. I admit I'm biased. We might have, you might have a, a your kind of plan in place, and we might come into that meeting and go, you know what? You have the right plan. In my mind, that's worth the money. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not saying two hundred thirty nine dollars is not a lot of money, but like that's worth it to where you can say, hey. We walked through this whole thing with the experts. They take a they took a look at my financial aid package and said, you got a fair deal. You might not like it, but this is fair based on your situation and based on that college. And we're going to be able to say that right away. Okay. And then we're going to say, yeah, the plan you have in place, you're nailing it. You're right on track. Right. And I'll be blown away if we if we can't offer value uh, where you feel good about that investment. So anyways, um, you know, and kind of Peg said it herself, we can't just say well, well, in this setting what you should or shouldn't do. Um, so that's why we have that opportunity. And again, you can meet with anyone on our team. Peg and I don't uh, specifically don't have a ton of availability. It exists, as you'll see, but anybody you meet with, um, you're going to feel great about. So uh, I think, Peggy, unless you have anything to add, we can we can spin this wheel, see who won the scholarship. Yeah, let's spin the wheel. Spin it, baby. So what's going to happen is I'm going to hit this triangle and it, just the first name is going to pop up. Right. And then I have to on this spreadsheet, which I can't share because it has thousands of names and email addresses, et cetera. It'll align with with that family's um, name. So hopefully knock on wood, this this person is on live right now. But let's see. Uh, let's see what we got here. And, and then we'll kind of find out. Somebody's going to get a thousand bucks the easy way, a thousand dollars less that somebody's going to have to borrow here in the winter. Paul, okay, Paul, hold, sit tight for one second, and let me go see if I can have some. Uh, Number nine forty-three. Or is it nine forty-three? I'm going down. I think my... that's what it said. You took it down so fast. <laughs> Actually, uh, it is nine forty-three. You're right. I just confirmed it. Nine forty-three. Okay. Okay, nine forty-three. Okay, well, this. All right, hold on. Let me answer a couple 
people are asking if you already booked an hour with us, all you need to do is go in your my cap if you want to book another hour and click talk to an expert. It's in the top right corner. And then you can pick first available, you can pick your expert, and then you pay and you um you go in. Make sure you use your coupon. Don't forget to use your loan 20 coupon. And yes, you will get a recording of this. People came in late. You know, recording in the slides. Okay. That's the there... name. People are waiting. They're like holding their yeah, sorry, breath. sorry. So so it is Paul, Paul W. I won't give the last name. The student's name is Reed. Okay, so Paul W. Students name Reed. Do we have do we have you on here tonight? Yeah, raise your hand if you're if raise you're your hand or tell us in so Paul W. Paul W. Students name Reed. And actually, the 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 winning school that got uploaded, the award letter was High Point University down there in North Carolina. North Carolina. The, the, the country club down there in North Carolina. We owe for two, owe for our last two. So uh, yeah, the coupon code is loan20, guys. Loan20 is the coupon yeah, code. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, the Pauls that are on here, W isn't the last initial. Yeah. If people are, if, you know, I'm just looking. All right, it would be so fun if these people- I, I mean, I, well, I got them. Come on, man. Let us, uh, we, we, we've had some great scholarship giveaways that are more personal. But yeah, hope hopefully everybody learned a lot. I mean, again, guys, don't- um. Okay, unable to locate where to book one-on-one -on, -one on the site. Um, give me just a second, guys. When you're on the site, right, all you have to do is just go up here to the top right. And again, some for some of you, it'll say talk to an expert. For some of you, it'll say upgrade. If it says upgrade, you'll choose the Val Victorian option, right? And otherwise, talk to an expert. These steps will, will lead you there, right? Um, but yeah, I think that's 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 your that's your move, guys. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we helped you folks out that are that are doing this. Uh, you DIYers, right? We love we we we, we well, we love you all. Period. Um, but anyways, I think Peggy, we're getting a lot. And appreciate all the kind words, guys. And glad everybody. Yeah, uh, yeah, it for. does. It means a lot. We love what we're doing, but it's. Better to earn it tonight. I'm sweating, man. I'm sweating, Peggy. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'll speak for myself. So. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. We appreciate you. We'll all right. Have a great night. Bye bye.